Erev Shabbos, Pashas Vayakil, Pashas Shkolim, Erev Rosh Chodesh, marching towards Purim. We're told in the mission of the Biyachat Ba'adr on the first of other, Mashmin al Shkolim. We let people know, we publicize about the Shkolim, about the collecting of the half shekel, the half shekel that was used for the public offerings for the carbon of Sibur. And they have to be collected by Nissan, and therefore we need to publicize and let people know they're coming. Even nowadays that we don't have that, but the concept of the Shkolem is a critical concept. Mashmian ala Shkolem. Not just that we let people know that the Shkolem are coming, but we also, there's a mashmos, there's an understanding, there's an implication of these Shkolem, that even we in our day, without a base of Mikdash, we need to understand that implication. And let's explore that a little bit. Because the Torah tells us, Zay Yitnu, this is what you should give. Zay Yitnu, pointing to something, saying specifically, Zay Yitnu, this is, this is what, this is how, this is what has to be given. It has to be given true Malah Hashem. But of course it has to be given a true Malah Hashem. So we have a statement in the Gemara. That says Om Reish Lakish, that it is known and revealed in front of the one who spoke, who spoke and created the world. In other words, in front of God. That in the future, Haman was going to count out Shkalim on the Jewish people. When he was going to buy the Jewish people and the rights to be able to destroy the Jews from Achashverosh. So he had to count out 10,000 talents of silver. Lefikach, therefore, hiktim shikleyen lishkolov. Therefore, the Jews' shkolim had to precede his shkolim. Behind this nan, it's like what we learn, Bechad Ba'adr, Mashmin al shkolim. That in the first of other, we talk about the shkolim because it has to precede the shkolim that we're going to talk about on the 14th. We have to wonder. That what Chazal are teaching us is that our coins cancel out his coins, cancel out Haman's coins. And that God knew that this was going to happen and therefore God had to set the stage and make sure that we had given long before he gave. What is the wonder on the Pasuk when it says Ze Yitnu? What is Ze referring to? This is what you give, this is how you give. Also, Trumal Hashem, of course it's given to Hashem. Why are we directing that? If you look at the conversation in the Megillah between Haman and Achashverosh, and Haman says to Achashverosh that Yeshno Am Echad, you have a nation that is Mephoza or Mephorad Ben Amim, that is split up amongst the people, that it's not worth it for you to leave them there. I will pay 10,000 talents in order to be able to destroy them. And Achashverosh says, you know what? You keep your money. And yeah, here's my ring. Let's uh, let's do it. Let's destroy them. The money seems to be not so important. The money seems to be inconsequential. The money just points to the Taivas Nikmasa Shalaman, to the desire to destroy that Haman had inside of him, that was burning inside of him. But the money doesn't really seem to be an important thing. So why do we need to cancel those shkalim? It wasn't the shkalim, it was the hatred. It was the hatred of Ahasuerus, it was the hatred of Haman. It was the plan. But it wasn't really about money. We also have to understand that if it's not so important, then why does it need to be prepared before ours? The money's not the ikker, it's not the main thing. So I think to understand all this, let's take a look at the Gemara in Megillah Dafyudalad. The Gemara says, Mashal Dachavarish Vahaman the Ma'ad Davar Doma. Haman was willing to spend money. Achashverish was so excited to get rid of the Jews that he said, you know, he, he sort of keep the money. So what could you, could you compare this to? So you can compare the Shnei B'nai Adam to two people, Le'echad Hayul Hotel. One of them had a mound in the middle of his field. And one of them had a, a chritz and a furrow. 
Bitoch Sadeum. Bal Chritz Omer, the owner of the, the Faro, said, Me, he tamely tells Zebedomim, who is, who is going to sell this to me? Boy, do I need that, that mound to fill in the hole in my field. And the Balatel Omer, Me, he tamely Chritz Zebedomim. Boy, do I need that Chritz? Do I need that hole so that I can get rid of that mound inside of my field? And they were really like partners, each one benefiting the other. And he dumps his dirt into his chritz, into his faro, into his into his hole, and everybody's happy. So who is the bal chritz? Who is the owner of the faro, and who is the owner of the mound? So I think Haman was the owner of the faro, the owner of the hole, because he was missing. He was wounded in his ego. And he was missing power. And Achashverosh? Achashverosh had those pests sticking out. He didn't care about Mordechai. He didn't care about the Jews that wouldn't bow down to him. But that they wanted to build the temple, they were just there and they were just sticking out. And he was missing the power to flatten them. And they both wanted to even the playing field. But neither one of them could do it alone. Haman had the genetics. He had the riches, the evil, the wickedness. Absolute wicked incarnate. And that wickedness was geared mostly towards the Jews. And he got that from the original Amalek, from the Amalek that attacked the Jews when they came out of Egypt. And that's why when it says... But Yagidlo Mordechai is Kolasher Karohu. When Mordechai told over everything that happened, he told over to Hazak to let him know and to tell Esther. He used the word Karohu. Karohu is a word that we find by Amalek. Asher Korcho Baderach. What happened to you? It's a word that means circumstance, coincidence, not a word that means the divine plan. So why did he use that word? Because he was sending a message. And he was saying that Ben Beno shall Karohu Boalenu. That the grandson, the offspring of Asher Karcha, of Karahu, of coincidence, has once again reared his ugly head. He's come back. And that's who Haman was. But Haman suffered from what's called his Kadnu Adoros, from the diminishment of the generations, which works even for the wicked. Haman was disconnected by many generations, from the original wickedness of Amalek. And it got diluted to the extent that he didn't have the power to destroy the Jews on his own. He was missing a Kayach. And what was that Kayach? It's called Kayach Anasino. It's called the power of giving. Because the power of giving is really the power of his batless. It's the ability to be able to make yourself battle, to nullify yourself, and to say that I don't matter. Something else bigger outside of me matters. And it manifests itself in giving when I'm willing to give to somebody else. I'm not worried about myself. I'm not worried about me. I'm not worried about my needs. And when it's done, the toiv, when it's done for good, it's an unbelievable koach. And when it's done with his batlas, when it's done with a willingness to void myself because of some greater thing outside of myself, or something that I that I makes that in my estimation is greater than me, that act of his batlas, that act of nullification of self nullification, carries with it an incredible power. And that koyachanesino. When it's used for good, it propels you upward. And when it's used for bad, the kayak that it has to destroy is unparalleled. The minute that Haman pledges money to destroy the Jews, he's mevatal himself. It's not about me and my ego to the extent that it's about the destruction of the Jews which of course is coming from his ego, but it's about, it's about something bigger. 
And that wickedness and that evil brings him back to the wickedness and the evil of the original Amalek. And he now has the power to completely obliterate from children to elders the entire Jewish people. And that's why this thing is called Parshas HaKesef. Why when he gave over the money it's called Parshas HaKesef. It wasn't inconsequential at all. It was huge. Because with this power of giving and this power of his patlus, this ability to be able to nullify yourself, there was a power in that that needed the Misha'am of Ahoyah the one who brought about the world. It needed God to intervene and to preempt that with our own Koach Hanasina, with our own his patlus, with our own willingness to give over of ourselves our giving our Nasina was both a Nasina and it was also connecting ourselves to the Tzibur because we were giving the money, we were giving the Shkalim to be used for public sacrifices. And both things are acts that make us invincible. And that's why the Torah tells me, Truma Lashem. That has got to be done, L'shem, L'shem Shemayim, Ze Yitnu, this is what you have to do. Yitnu, give! Because the power that comes from giving is a power that makes us invincible. That's why our Shkalim had to come before his Shkalim. Because that power of giving is huge but it's more powerful when it's used for good. And that was ultimately our protection. And that's what's protected us throughout the generations. And look at the way we celebrate this holiday. Mishloach Manos, Matonos Lehev Yonim, Ze Yitnu, Give. The focus is about what we're going to be doing for other people. How much money are we going to give for Tzlaka, for Matanas How are we going to give Mishloach Manas? How are we going to connect ourselves to others? And that's why before the first of other, Mashmiyam al Ashkalim, we got to hear about the Ashkalim. Because we got to hear about this Koach of Nesina, this Koach of giving. And that's got to be our preparation for Purim. Getting ourselves ready to give. Because when we give, when we're focused on others, when we're mevatel ourselves, we have a power that is unbeatable. And it's why we're still here after 2,000 years of being pummeled by Haman and his offspring, we're still here because we still care and we still give. Ze yitnu. Just give. Give it truma Hashem. Give it real Give it with kavana. Give it in the right way to the right direction. And that's going to be the thing that's going to ensure that you're going to remain powerful and continue to grow closer to the master of the universe. Have an amazingly beautiful Shabbos.